just begin to worship him today make it your prayer Lord I give you my heart I give you my soul I live tell y'all a little a little story this morning hallelujah hallelujah in the name of Jesus so this morning we were on our way to church right and so Alfred was like all these little butterflies they're just flying around they're just swarming all of these little and they're yellow butterflies so y'all know I like Google so I googled it just for fun, because I'm like, you know what, it is a whole lot of butterflies. We don't see butterflies like that. Not that many of them, right? So I Google the significance of a yellow butterfly. And I'm going to tell you what Google says. It says a yellow butterfly represents joy and creativity. So I said, well, I told after that, he said, well, we received that right now. So I'm going to tell you today, because we saw swarms of yellow butterflies, because we are all connected in the body of Christ, that means we all are supposed to be full of joy and creativity. And then it says, it reminds us to, guess what else? To have fun. So that means have some fun. You ain't got to be all, everything got to be all. Everything don't have to be all super spiritual all the time. Yes, we love the Lord, but he wants us to have fun, too. It reminds us to have fun. It says, a yellow butterfly flying around you brings happiness and prosperity. Prosperity ain't just money, right? That's full life prosperity. 
And it means that something fun and exciting is on its way. So when we go out of here today, let's all just go out of here and say, you know what? Something good is going to happen to me today. So every day say something good is going to happen to me today. Something fun and exciting is going to happen to me today. Amen. I'm excited about it. I said, okay, joy and creativity. Hmm. That's those witty inventions that we talk about, right? And joy is unspeakable joy. So no matter what it is you're going through, joy can get you through it. Because if you got joy, nothing can bring you down. Nothing. Amen. 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 That was an awesome word this morning. Amen. Because when we saw this morning, for some reason, from the time we left home until we got out of Maricopa, it was just yellow butterflies all around. And it was just so pretty. I'm like, no, well, just I need you to see what's going on. That was like, no, when I say massive, I don't know if it's just the weather or something going on, what it was. It was a, like a swarm of yellow butterflies flying around the whole, from the time we got from the house until we got out of Maricopa. It was like a five or ten minute drive in, from, from the time you got out. And all you've seen just a swarm of yellow butterflies just falling around. So, so I said, Noel, check it out. And Noel looked that up. It's like, wow, okay. We're going to have some joy and some prosperity today. Amen. I'm living in some peace. Living in some peace. Amen. So, I mean, just take that word. Have any words of encouragement today? Eric, right, just turn her microphone off. I'll let her talk about this one. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, it, it was just an awesome thing. It was just an awesome thing this morning. Well, well, do we have any first-time visitors in the house? Any first-time visitors? Amen. Amen. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen, amen, amen. Well, on behalf of uh, myself, Pastor Alan Noel, and also my, my parents, Apostle Alfred and Ambassador Beverly Craig, we like to say welcome to I Am Church, where Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. There's a, we, 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 we believe that this church is going to be, you'll have an awesome opportunity to hear the word and what God has something for you. We know that whether you came from, we know you had a lot of churches you could pass by, but guess what? We believe that I Am Church is the church for you. Amen. Today. Amen, amen. Well, and we like to say, we like to say welcome to the I Am church family welcome i am family amen and also people that's online you know we have now we have an online ministry now we have some people that's they part of our e-church who who can't be here in the physical building but they also they watch everything online now so welcome to your i am e-church members amen amen welcome to you guys we have a lot of people that's out this morning they, a lot of people's on vacation a lot of people doing birthday celebrations so we like to say welcome and we miss you guys we see you guys next week or in two weeks or if not we can see you guys when, when you guys get back in town amen? amen amen how many people know that we are a church we're not we're not just a church we are a what and we do ministry in life Together. as we walk by and not by Amen, amen. We'd like to say welcome, amen. So if you can, uh, if you have all your social medias, let people know that we're now online, amen. Go and share with your family and friends. Send them a text. Say, hey, come and check out my church today and let them know what's going on here. Because I believe what, what, what my, my father and uh, uh, Apostle Alfred Craig has to teach to us today, I believe it's going to be an awesome, awesome word, amen. So go and let your friends know that we are now online, amen. Don't forget about our theme this year. Our theme this year for 2021 is, is to what? To faith to possess the double to live out the what the hundredfold and how we're going to do that we're going to do that spiritually physically and financially amen amen, amen. And, and, and with that once we do all that then we can truly do the dream that god has has gave us for this whole year amen, amen. and this is our follow announcements these are our follow announcements uh as we grow we're going to be growing amen Amen. So there's some things that me and Pastor Noel, we're, we're, we're putting some things in place because sometimes we can't see everyone. We can't talk to everyone. We can't fellowship with everyone. But there's some things we're going to be putting in place with some fellowships that we can do together. Amen. One of the things, a couple of things we're going to be doing in the next month or so in September, uh, there's going to be a mystery dinner we're going to be attending. Amen. It's going to be a dinner that we're going to be attending. It's going to be a mystery uh, play type of thing. Uh, it's going to be on September 25th. We'll be sending more information out. So make sure you guys look at your text. It's going to be a mystery dinner. Uh, it's going to be on September 25th at 6 p.m. The cost will be between things 65 and 75 dollars, but we'll give you all the information. What's going to be have you going to be able to see the uh, the play, and also it, it, the meal will include a salad, 
appetizer, chicken, fish, or zucchini, and a main meal and dessert is, is a part of the menu. So get yourself prepared for that if you like to be a part of that. And that's where you can also get me and Pastor Noel uh, one-on-one. Sometimes, like I said, on Sundays or just from a phone call, you can't, you can't hear from us or talk to us. But that's the way that we, we can connect with you guys, amen, with doing different fellowships outside, outside the church, amen. Then another one we're going to be doing uh, on September 18th. Uh, how many people know Yolanda Adams? Yolanda Adams, amen. She's going to be coming in concert on September 18th uh, at 6 p.m., which is on a Saturday. So we'll be put, putting that together also as a group, as a church family. So get yourself ready on some things that we're doing as a church family so we can continue growing and we can do things as small groups. Because sometimes people say, well, y'all can't, y'all don't call me, but this is how y'all can get a hold of us. Amen. You can fellowship with us and talk with us and give us some ideas that you may have. And, and also me and Pastor Noel, we like to, uh, I know Pastor, Apostle Craig used to do this back in the day. We do like to eat also. So if y'all want to invite us over to y'all house on Sundays, you mean you can't invite us to your house on Sundays, or even throughout the week, hey, amen, we, we love to eat, well, Pastor Noel loves to eat, I like to snack, Pastor Noel like to eat, wow. and eat, and eat, and eat, yes, with no portion control, I got the Dunlap disease, y'all, yes, <laughs> amen, 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 yeah, lay, lay, lay hands on it, lay hands on it, baby, so what we're going to do, also, uh, don't forget, uh, next Sunday, everybody say next Sunday, Next Sunday we're going to have a photo shoot Sunday, photo shoot Sunday. So if you come in with your uh, uh, come in with your gear, come in with you what you what you like, and we're gonna have a young lady who's a part of the membership. Uh, she's gonna be taking photos, everyone. Uh, so if you have your best dress, your look, whatever look you want to come in, where you want to be dressed down, you want to come with a stylish hat, whatever you want to do, we're gonna have a photo shoot Sunday where she's gonna take your uh, photos, and then you can post online, let people know what you're doing. So get prepared for photo shoot Sunday. Amen. Amen. Also, don't forget, uh, also we're going to have testimony service. So if you have a testimony, God's been doing some things for you, and you want people to know what's going on, we're going to have that next Sunday, too. So Because there's a, there's a lot of things that God's been doing on people's hat, on people's lives, amen? I remember back in the day, that's what you always had at a part of your church. It's called testimony service, amen? So if you'd like to be a part of the testimony service, send me and Pastor Noel a text. If you, have our, if you don't have our number, uh, you can go to our page or... We'll tell you it's 602-332-0837, amen, or 480-406-1948, and we'll make sure we get that information to you so you can be a part of the testimony service, amen. Amen. Also, don't forget, uh, we now have our, what is that called, babe? The coffee. The coffee cafe thing, thingamajig. Yeah, what she said, what is it called? What did you, uh, coffee. <laughs> My poor baby. Yeah, yeah. This, that's what it is. But anyway, you can get coffee and tea and, 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 and smoothies. Yes. A yes. cafe. Yes, I am cafe. I, I am cafe, man. So if you would like to be a, if you would like to have a alpha cap, uh, a coffee cafe, you can download the app. It's called Engage, and then we'll send you that. But not just go out to the uh, four year after service, and we'll have you a nice tea. Also, with, with have, it has a uh, uh, coffee, coffee smooth, and also what is the the things that's in it. Nutritional, drink. nutritional drinks that have everything, oh, all the. <laughs> my, my meal replacement has all the different yeah. ingredients, yes. proteins, and everything Protein, that you would. Yes. Yeah, if you like all that, just go ahead and go there and they have it. And you, I, I'm glad you guys have been supporting it and taking yeah. care of it. If you did have the app, make sure you try to do your app. As soon as possible, amen. So we can, so they can process the orders or not. You don't have the app. We can give you the app following service, amen. On how you can get that, amen. Also, don't forget about morning Monday morning manna with Miss Janae, amen. On Sunday morning, I'm on Monday mornings at 9 a.m. Also, don't forget about intercessory prayer at 7 p.m. And also this particular Wednesday, uh, Elder Miles, he's in, he's on vacation. So me and Pastor Noel will be teaching Bible study, amen. We have an awesome word. I believe God's going to. We're gonna, we guys gonna teach him, man. He's gonna be, I got, I got a word for that. Say, so, amen. So, uh, I believe it's gonna be awesome. I'm, it's gonna be understanding the kingdom, and we're gonna be talking about what's in your box. What's in your box? Is Jack in your box? Who's in your box? So we're going to be talking about Jack in the box of, of getting some things out, out in your life and where we're going and what God's called us to do. So if you would like to come in church, we do have live services now. Uh, now you can be here at 7 p.m. So if you'd like to be a part of that, come on to, to Bible study that night. Amen. We, we believe that me and Pastor Will are going to have an awesome word because where we're going. Amen. No man has gone before as far as I am, church, amen. And we're, we're going to take you to get that jack out your, so you can get that jack out your box, amen. Sometimes we've been solidified to stick in the box, but God said, I want to get y'all out the box. 
Amen. We want he want to get y'all out the box. So come on Sunday. Come on, come on Wednesday night, and we'll be talking about getting Jack out your box. Amen. Getting Jack out your box. So come on 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 Wednesday night Bible study, and we'll be talking about how you can get Jack out your box. Amen. So uh, and also if you if if not if you can't, we'll do be, also be online. Amen. We'll be sending you a link to get on that. Amen. Amen. Don't forget about uh, the marriage conference. The marriage conference is August the nineteenth through the twenty first. So go make sure you get yourself registered. Uh, don't forget for the students who has not finished your DTI assignment. Don't forget you have until the end of August to finish all your assignments or you have to repeat the, the first year. Amen. So go and get all your assignments done. Watch all your videos that we have online and get it all completed. Amen. So we can go ahead and go into our next year of DTI and also uh, we can go move forward. Amen. Amen. So everyone say October 3rd. October 3rd, October 3rd is our launch party. We're, we're, we're officially launching our ministry. George, do you have that video, that picture up? Okay. We, we will be doing on this uh, here, though. You don't have it on there? Okay. Well, uh, we'll be uh, doing our official launch on October 3rd at 9 a.m. We are expecting 200 people on Sunday morning. Amen. So go ahead, and, go ahead and start letting your friends know. We'll be sending you flyers out. You can send out text messages, whether you can send out email, whether you can send out Facebook, or you can send out Messenger. So go ahead and get yourself ready for that. Amen. So, so we can have our official launch service for 200. Amen. So, amen. How many people say 200? All we got to do is just to start receiving it because we're going to receive that 200 people on that Sunday morning. Amen. Then on that Sunday evening, that Sunday evening, we're going to have a praise party of a celebration where we're going to have music going on. We're going to have a lot of different things at 5 p.m. on that same evening. So go ahead and tell your friends and family for the ones who couldn't make it because they may attend another service. But tell them we want to uh, have them come and help celebrate us on what God is doing in, in that on that ministry. That's, so save the date. Amen. Save the date. That's on. And, and, and our theme is, our theme is experience the difference. Experience the difference. Amen. Experience the difference. That's the difference of what God's doing in our lives. So come in and experience the difference here at I Am. Amen. Experience. That's going to be our theme. So save the date. You got something to say, babe? Okay, go ahead. That's good. Well, you didn't, they oh, I didn't. thought they turned it off. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Oh, okay. So I just wanted to say, you know, it's at the new church, though. It won't be here. It'll be at the new church. That's all. Yeah, it's going to be at the new church. <laughs> Yeah, the new building. Wait a minute. Thank you. Because I'm sitting here like, okay, maybe they don't realize he's saying at the new church. See, that's what it was. I didn't get a chance to see. See, you feel the announcement. That's part of the announcement. Yes. Yes. So, how many people know we're going to a new building? We're going to a new building. And that new building is going to be on that date of celebration. Amen. The new bill is going to be on the new date of the celebration. So we're going from a 2,700 square feet to a 4,500 square foot building. And we did it because you guys made it happen. Amen. You guys, the team, the family. What we've been teaching on was team and family. And how many people know you can't succeed without the what? The team. There's no big eyes and no little you. It's what we do as a team, as a family, is what's going to make the difference and what's going to make things happen. Amen. 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 So thank you guys for being a part in that, making it happen. But how many people know that we're living the dream this year? Amen. And the, the dream was to possess the double. Yeah. So, so far, once we get to that, that day, we're going we're gonna to have the double. Because we, 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 we started out with 75 to 100 people. But on that day, that's going to be, what, 200. So we're going to possess the devil. By the end of the year, we're going to live the hundredfold. Everything going to come back to what God had really restored. He's restoring everything back to us 100-fold. Amen. So get yourself ready. Amen. So guess what, guess what God did this week, y'all? I told y'all last week that the deposit was paid, right? The whole deposit to move into the building has already been paid. Y'all did that. The whole deposit. Then another thing happened this last week. Another thing happened last week was... I told you guys we 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 raised what uh uh, uh twenty five hundred of the ten thousand. So last so yesterday we was at a seminar yesterday with uh with my father with my with my father we was at a seminar, and you know everyone was sowing their seeds. I'm like y'all know me I don't just be sowing no seed because just because of, just be sowing a seed. But God said you know what Alfred Junior I need you to sow a seed for for the church. On behalf of I am church family. Sow a seed into your apostle. And I want you to give 10%. I seen everybody else so and so I'm like, you know what? Ah, uh, y'all, I don't I ain't ready for all that right now. But God says, nope, I need you to do it. 
So we sowed a seed of $1,000 to Apostle Craig yesterday for, for the seminar, what God's doing. Because I'm looking at, because 10% of the 10000 that we need is 1000 And within 10 minutes, somebody in that seminar blesses back with that $1,000. So the thousand dollars came back one hundred fold. So guess what? I'm just ready to see what's, how we're gonna get the other finances. So now we have to thirty five hundred dollars already, and we ain't even really been promoting it yet. It ain't been promoted yet, or even talked about yet. So God is just doing it miraculously. So let's keep moving forward, amen. Just keep doing how you say, how me and the pastor was say. We, we said a theme last year. All we gotta do is just step our faith up and just keep obeying God. Just obey God. obey God. Amen. Amen. So get yourself ready for that. And uh, we, we, we about to get ready for what God is about to do. So uh, go ahead. We go about to go ahead and dismiss the children. The children go ahead and be dismissed. Amen. Children go ahead and be dismissed. And the next thing we're going to do is uh, bring my, my father up. And we're going to do our, off, we're going to do our confession. Amen. We're going to do our confession. Ready? This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I can do, I can do what, it what it says I can do. I am, I am. what it says I am. I'm a, I'm a believer, not a doubter. Not a doubter. I am a doer, a doer and not just a hearer. And my life, my life is the better, is the better. After, having after having heard the word of faith. The word of faith. Faith, comes faith, comes faith comes by hearing and hearing by, hearing by the, word of God. the word of God. Amen, amen. amen. So now I present to you my, are you coming up to my, <laughs> I'm now I present to you my father, my, my mentor, my spiritual father, and everything in the gospel, Al Apostle Alfred Craig Sr. Amen. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God, God, progress is going on, isn't it? Amen. Well, we're excited. Praise you. We sit in the presence of the Lord. And uh, again, uh, you know, yesterday our seminar was off the hook. It was literally off the hook, praise God. And so we're thanking God for being here. Thanking God, and we're rejoicing with you for the new building. Everybody say new building. New building. Amen. That's double, double this year, praise God. And so, again, we, uh, number one, honor uh, uh, Pastor Allen Noel. Give the Lord a hand clap for them. They're doing a great job. Amen. Yes. Yes. And the team, Amen. the I Am team, praise God. Amen. Together, everyone accomplishes more. Amen. The team, praise God. So we praise God for you. Then again, my wife, Dr. Bell. Good Lord, hand clap for my wife, Dr. Bell. Praise God. Amen. And uh, God is doing some great things with us, you know, as apostles. And uh, we're excited. You know, it's just good to see that what God says, he's doing it. And, and, and the good thing about it, it happened during COVID. You know, where people, a lot of churches went out of business during COVID. And yet this church prevailed, just went straight up in Jesus' name. And, and, and it's because, you know, God is not limited to COVID. Amen. You know, God limited. He said, according to your faith, be it unto you. And so you all are doing a great job. Amen. Hallelujah. So let, let's pray. Let's get into the word of God. We've got some things we're going to be sharing today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do honor you today. And we thank you for your goodness and your love. We thank you as always, precious Father, for your divine presence and your Holy Spirit. And you've given unto us that he is our guide and teacher. We ask also, Father, that spiritual wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and skill is given to us, which enables and equips us with supernatural power and anointing to minister your word as we ought. We ask that every ear is anointed to hear, every eye is anointed to see, and every heart is anointed to believe and receive the things of the Spirit of God. We give you thanks, Father, and we covenant with you in advance for all the things that, that shall be accomplished to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor for it. In Jesus, everybody say it. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, again, I'm excited about October the 3rd. Amen. Amen. And, and, and you know, it's up from here. It's up from here, praise God. I remember when we, when we first started uh, uh, the church here in Phoenix years ago, uh, we started with 50 people. Amen. And, and by the end of that year, we had doubled to over 100. And then by the next year, we doubled we up to about over 200 people. We went to 600 people, then 1,000 people, then just went from that point. So you all are on track. Uh, for God, everything God did through myself and my wife, Dr. Bev, y'all on track to do even greater works in Jesus' name. Is that all right? Amen. Praise God. Now, what I'm, what I'm going to be sharing is kind of a little bit of what I shared yesterday with the pastors yesterday. Because it's important. The word team means T-E-A-M. 
together everyone accomplishes more. That's team. And so um, what we're going to be looking at uh, over these next three months as we prepare for this great church launch, we're calling the church relaunch. Yeah. Amen. What we're looking at is that, we're, as, as, Pastor, as Pastor Al said, we believe in God that we have 200 people on that day. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, I share something with you. Uh, when we first went to Las Vegas, <clears throat> I didn't, know, I didn't, know, I didn't know, not know my way around that good. And, I, and my, my Mercedes needed some work. So not knowing what Mercedes dealership was, like that, I just kind of Googled Mercedes uh, mechanic. And this one place came up. And so I said, you know, I'm going to take my car there. <clears throat> so when I took my car there, um, uh, you know, the guy was asking where I was from. And I got to myself from Arizona. He said, what were we doing? What, you know, what was we doing there? I said, you know what? I was a, I'm a pastor and, and things like that. And he said, well, he says, you know what? The guy that owned this, this whole shop here, he's a Christian. He said, maybe I, I think he want to meet you. I said, okay. Uh, and so uh, he came out and met me. So you know what? He said, my church that I go to, we're having what we call a church launch uh, uh, on, on this. It's like a, about a month later. And he said, would you like to come and be a part of that? I said, no problem. I said, we, we, you know, we're just new here, and I, I, we'd love to, to come. So, you know, myself and Dr. Bell, we decided we're going to go. This is their first day. This is their first day. We got there, and in the parking lot, People had signs, welcome, welcome to, this is their first day. Welcome, welcome to our church today. It was just so exciting. I'm saying, my God, you know, I used to plant churches, but, you know, you start with two or three people and hold somebody walk through the door. And, uh, and then on the first day, signs, welcome to our church, welcome to our church today. And then uh, after that, we, we, we go in and the greeters were there. Welcome, welcome. I said, oh, my God. And then the urchins were there. Welcome. Everybody was so excited. And I look at and we, he had two services on the first day. And we went to the second service, and it was over 250 people in that service. This was not a church that was one. This was the first day. And I was so impressed. I said, oh, my God, this is different. from. The, I've been doing churches for years. I ain't nothing like it before. Two services the first day, and we went to the second service, over 200 people in the second service. And they, 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 were, they, were, they rented out a school cafeteria that they went in there at 2, I mean, I think like 6 o'clock that morning, put all the chairs in there, put the band equipment in there, put lighting in there, and made it look like a church that had been going for 10 years. Everybody said team. Yeah. See, that was a team that did that because they had to get it all out of there by the next day because school was going to be happening. But together, and so I called the pastor the next day. I said, look, I said, man, I said, I'm, I'm a pastor you know, from Arizona. And, man, I was so impressed with what I saw uh, uh, yesterday. I said, well, uh, what's, how do you do that? How do you do that? I don't mind asking. I mean, I didn't start churches all over the world, but I ain't never done like, seen like that before. And he said, what I've done, he said, we didn't just start today. We've been planning for this. We've been preparing for this. And I, and I trained all my leaders. Like when you see the people on the outside out there, they were expecting this. When you saw the greeters, they were expecting this. You saw the ushers, they were expecting this. The praise and worship team was, was excellent. But he said, we prepared this whole service again, almost like a production, on how this service was going to go on and the excitement that was going to build. And everybody was so excited that got involved in this. And every, the team working together is how what you see today is a result of all of us working together. Team, T-E-A-M, together, everyone accomplishes more. So as we talk about October the 3rd, all we're going to look at today is our, our team. Because God is of no respect to persons. And when you get a team of people like, we, like Pastor Alan Noel have here that work together, this 200 people on that day ain't no problem, man. Akuna Matata. God is able to do exceeding abundantly and above all we can ask or think according to his power that's working in us. So, we're, so we're, when we're talking about this launching, we're not talking about just hope somebody's going to show up. No, everybody's going to be so excited from the parking lot with signs to the greeters with, with, with excitement to the urchers. Oh, so glad to have you here. To the praise and worship, amen, everything is going to be so powerful 
that, like, what do you say, experience, what you call Alfred, Alfred experience the difference, was it? Difference. That you're going to come, y'all come experience the difference. Because on this, because see, that's what has to happen. The excitement of the Super Bowl don't just start on that day. But they build for that excitement. And, and by the time Super Bowl comes, people are so pumped up. Are y'all following me? And that's the momentum that we want to see happen here. So yesterday, I talked to pastors and all the, the leaders that were there. I talked for three hours all yesterday on this. To them, and give y'all a teeny bitch. T- teeny bitch. Teeny, teeny bitch. What do you call it? Teeny bitch. Teeny bitch. Teeny bitch. Tinchy bitch. Whatever you call it. Teeny bit. Teeny bit. Teeny bit. Give y'all a teeny bit. A tidbit. Hey, I'm from the country, and I know we had a word. I just tried to pull it up because I've been in the city for quite a few years. So I was trying to pull up some of my country colloquial expressions, and I knew it was in there, but I had to put, get it. So y'all helped me. Some of y'all the country folks, now y'all helped me out on that one. Amen. But uh, so the focus of today is going to be what? On relaunching our church for both in person and virtual. One of the things I've noticed that in the, in the last year that a lot of churches was not ready for, they were not ready for what was required last year when the government had to, all the churches shut down and nobody could come to church. Many churches went out of business. Many businesses went out of business. But for those that remain creative and innovative, they, they grew last year. But one thing we have to establish is not only just an in-person ministry, but also a virtual ministry. It's called the hybrid church. Some of you got a hybrid car. It means it can run both on gas and electric. Well, church now is not going to go back to where it was. Because members now have gotten used to uh, being virtual. But then there's some of y'all, like you're here today, that love the in-person. It's like a football game. There are certain people, uh, 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 was it a game yesterday, the, the Suns played yesterday? There were some people that wanted to be in them stands. And, you, man, I don't care how much it costs, they're going to be at that basketball game. But there's others that were so satisfied and said, y'all come to my house. We're going to get some potato chips and some Budweiser beer or whatever they're going to have. And they're going to, have, they're going to enjoy themselves, what, at home. So, you, so they had both an uh, a, 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 a in-person and then they also had virtual or by television. The church now, that's, we're looking now at a hybrid church. Because there's people now that got exposed to church. That, that I am ministries will be their church now. They may not show up in here. But they're just, they'll be just as much a part of this ministry as the ones that come. Like the, 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 the Phoenix Suns fans out there was a part of it, but the ones at home were just as much of fans as the one that participated in person. And that's how the, 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 what they call the hybrid church now that is. Because some pastors say, we just want to get back to what it used to be. No, it, it, it doesn't expand it now. So, we, so, we, so when we talk about this, we're looking at this about, about relaunching the ministry based upon the hybrid church model because there are going to be some people that are going to be members of our church that are not just Facebook watchers. They're actually members of I Am Church. And they look forward to the Bible study. They look forward to the Sunday morning services because they, they're doing it what? At home. You got that? So... As we talk about then, about this two and the people, we're looking at that. That's just the beginning of this thing. Yeah. Amen? And, uh, and, 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 and so let's look at for, for a moment here uh, 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 on why we need a church relaunch. We're going to relaunch because now it's not going back to where it was. Okay. Are y'all following that today? How many of y'all, how many of y'all love Jesus? Because I'm, I'm, talk, I'm talking to believers. I'm looking for people that, you know, that want to be used by the Lord today. But what, why relaunch this church, what we call a hybrid ministry? Number one, the relaunch will what? Jumpstart supernatural growth. 
Oh, are y'all you, you ready for a jump start? Yes. Yeah, amen. And, and it's going to jump start supernatural church growth. And I'm going to show you today that that's how, when we talk about this relaunch, going to suit, uh, 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 we're probably going to go more than 200 people that day. Amen. Because this, this, this relaunch is going to jump, everybody said jump start. It's going to jumpstart a supernatural uh, deal. And, and, and when that starts happening, I mean, we started the church in West Phoenix over there. I didn't know where people was coming from. We didn't have a sign up at that time. We was in the back of the building. I don't know, some of y'all, I don't know if any of y'all was there during that time, but we was in the, in the back of the building around the corner, and, uh, and, and people got, kept hearing about it. They said, where y'all at? We've been looking for y'all for the last hour. Well, you know, <laughs> the people that owned it at that time they wouldn't put a, let it use, put a sign up. This is going to be just a church. They didn't know one day we're going to own the whole place. Right. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, so when that supernatural starts happening, people are just going to start coming. Yeah. Where do you go to church at? I've been hearing about your church. And, 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 and when that starts happening, something supernatural starts happening. Yeah. And I want to show you all that when Jesus Christ, he wanted to get this principle in the hearts of his disciples. But so he had to show it to him naturally first so he could see it working. So he had, he had asked to borrow Peter's boat, to use his boat to preach in. And in the book of St. Luke, chapter number five and verse number four, it says, and now when Jesus had left speaking, he said unto Simon, what? Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drop, which means let down your nets for a catch. Hallelujah. You know, I, I, I love, you know, I, I, I don't know that much about fishing, but, uh, but I learned uh, uh, myself and Dr. Bell went fishing one time, and, <laughs> and uh, uh, she loved fishing. Bell can fish and ain't got to catch nothing. She loved fishing. But me, I, I got to have some results. <laughs> but so I'm going fishing, and on the way there, we stopped by and got some ch- Kentucky Fried Chicken. Hallelujah. Sometimes I'm just going fishing. I can use you know, the extra chicken to put on the bait, you know, put on the hook and, you know, kick me some fish. Fish ain't got no better scent. I'm going to feed them something, you know what I mean? But I get there, and, and this was a bass fish hole. Some of y'all fishing I'm talking about. So then, so I, I put it on the, on the end, and you can see the fish out there, and they just kind of going right by my hook. Said, What's wrong with y'all stupid fish, y'all? Going right by my hook. I'm trying to feed y'all. Didn't do nothing. And so finally someone see my frustration. They said, Dr. Craig said, look, uh, they, they can see me, you know, I'm a, pre- a preacher out here trying to fish. They can see I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, they said, you know, uh, you, this is a bass fish hole, and the bass won't bite this anything. They said, that right there, the little pond over there, there is what they call shad fish. If you put them on the end, a little bit of small fish, the, the bass will hit it. And so I uh, put it on the end. I got me some of the bass fish, put on the end, and within about a couple minutes, and you know, I don't know if it's supernatural or what, but the Spirit of God just kind of showed me. I said the Spirit of God now. He said, cast it right over there. And I, you know, I, I pointed right to where the Lord, I said the Lord today, it had to be the Lord because I, I didn't know about fishing, but it just came to my mind right over there. Did that, and within like 10 seconds, boom, hit. I said, yeah, that's it. Yeah. But then what happened was, I didn't know how to reel him in. I'm excited. And so Belle said, Mick, give me that pole. I, <laughs> she took my pole with me because she was so excited to fish and got it in. And, and, and then about a few minutes later, I did it again. And I'm the only one catching fish. Everybody that's fishing, I'm the only one catching fish. And, and the Lord put it in my heart. Now this time over there, put it over there. I did it over there. And again, hit again. People kind of got spooked in. It's a preacher, something. What's, what's going on here? Nobody's catching fish with me now. But then God showed me. Now, that fish don't bite what I like. They bite what they like. And Jesus says, cast your net for a fish. I mean, he knows what the fish are biting. Are you following? So I am ministry, I am church. Jesus knows what a two of the folks already are. We just got to get this thing nourished up to become the right bait. All right, let me show you this. We said this church relaunch, are you following me, will cause supernatural church growth. You got that? So, so then he said, okay, for a catch, not just to go fishing. 
You're going to catch something when, you, when you're doing this. Verse 5 said, and Simon answered, said unto him, Master, but we done told all night long. We've always been used to a little small church not doing much. And I'm taking how much? Nothing. Nothing. Nevertheless, of my word, I will let down the net. I'm going to relaunch this thing back out. So what I'm saying, what we're talking about right now, don't think about what happened in your past. Don't think about the old church. Just think about this relaunch is now being ordered by the Lord. But we told all now. He said, but no, when you relaunch this time, he said, now in the past, nothing happened. He said, but when you relaunch this time, he said, well, our past says ain't nothing going on. But he said, but nevertheless, at your word, I'm going to let down this net. I'm going to relaunch back out again because they have been fishing all that long and called nothing. Can that be a word for you today? You may have been trying some things that have been happening. But can I give you a word today? Relaunch back out again. Relaunch back out again because God got a word for you. When you do things that have been ordered by the Lord, then things start happening supernaturally. So look what happened here in, a, in, a, in, in verse 6. And when they had done this on October the 3rd, when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their church ran over that day. Hallelujah. That's the experience. You said, Dr. Craig, how can we have this? How can we do this? Well, it starts with a vision. You, you got to have a vision for this. I was, I was, I was talking about a, 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 an example that I, I heard a minister talking about, and he was talking about the, one of the, the, the great uh, um, architects, the great sculptors. And, and the people asked him, how were you able to create such a beautiful sculpture? He said, what I did is I didn't create it. I already saw it. I just removed the excess. I already had a picture in my mind. But it was just the excess around it that was keeping it from being revealed. So I want you to, uh, so 200 people is already there. We got to remove all the doubt. All the unbelief. Because it's already there. But without a vision, you'll perish. Well, we see apostolic growth throughout the Bible. You know, in the, you know it's not, this is not going to be on the notes, but in Acts chapter 2, verse 41, Peter's first sermon, 3,000 folks got saved. Don't tell me what God can't do. And then in Acts 2, 47, so the Lord added to the church daily, said you should be saved. How many of you are the same yesterday and forever? Acts 4.4 4 says over 5,000 men got saved at one time. Somebody doing some fishing around there, wasn't it? Acts 5.14 says a multitude of believers were added to the Lord, both men and women. Acts 6.7 says the number of disciples multiplied greatly. Mm. Acts 16.15 said the churches increased in number daily. Acts 19.10 said this continued by the space of two years so that all they would dwell in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. That looks like the same kind of fishing that Jesus did. The book of Acts is the ministry of Jesus through people. And what I'm saying is he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But we got we to gotta, we gotta have a vision for that and get rid of all the unbelief. I see 1,000. I see 1,000. And all we got to do when we get to 100, trim off some more. Get to 200, trim off some more. Fun. You keep on trimming off because God had already done it. Jesus already said, launch out into the deep for a catch. All we got to do, Peter said, nevertheless. He had, to, he had to get into that nevertheless moment. He had to forget those things that were behind him. He had to forget everything that did not work. He had to forget what happened last year during COVID. Because now God has given a fresh word. Launch back out into the deep now. Relaunch back out there because I got a supernatural church growth already done for you. Hallelujah. Yeah. You got that? 
So let, let me, let's show this then. How then are we going to relaunch our church? Number one is we got to what? We have a vision. You got to have a vision for increase. You got to have a vision for this. You got to see it right now. So from this day forward, we have 200 people on October the 3rd in person, in house. Amen. Come on, y'all. Got y'all that? Amen. Amen. Now, now, this is not including the ones going to have online. Hallelujah. Habakkuk 2, 2 says what? And the Lord answered me and said what? Write it down, down, y'all. And do what? Make it plain. Make it plain upon the tables that he may run that read it there. So from this day forward, you write it down. October the 3rd. Are y'all got that? October the 3rd, we have. To the people, Bible said, call those things that be not as though they already are. Somebody say, October 3rd, October 3rd. We, have we have in attendance, in attendance. 200 people. 200. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If Jesus told Peter to do it, the Acts of Apostles, they did it. He ain't changed. It's going to happen in this church, and it's going to be up from that point. Hallelujah. What is a vision? A vision is a divine directive that seeks human human availability to bring it to pass. So so it's not all God and then all us. It's all a collective work between us with God working together with him. And like I said, Number one, I didn't experience in my own personal life through ministry, over 45 years of ministry. But when I saw that church up there, it just kind of renewed something in my spirit. I was, oh, my God. Two services on the first day. Second service, over 250 in the second service. Mm-mm-mm. Hallelujah. Are y'all ready? I I see y'all, y'all, that's God working it already. Y'all already getting that sculpture already. Everything's peeling off. Acts 16, verse 9 says what? And what? A vision appeared to Paul. See, everything is about vision. In the night. And there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, come over into, uh, and, into Macedonia and help us. To every vision, that means there's people that are talking to God. They may be drug addicts. They may be alcoholics. People get ready to commit suicide, but they need the help that this ministry is able to provide. Amen. Hmm? The location that God is sending us to is because there's people there waiting on our help. Are you following me? When, 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 God, when God called Moses, it wasn't because Moses had a pork dream. It wasn't because Moses had some kind of big vision. God said, Moses, I've heard the cry of my people. It ain't about you, Moses. I'm responding to these drug addicts that's on this cocaine and, 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 and alcoholism and drug addiction and, 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 and people that have been married and divorced 10 times and getting ready to give up on life. I'm, I'm sending you because I've heard their cry. Therefore, I, I, he said, therefore, I'm sending you to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. When God calls you because he's heard the cry of people. Come over into Macedonia and what? Help us. And then in verse 10 he says, and after he had seen the vision, immediately, oh my God, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia are surely gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. You got to believe that where God is sending you to is because the Lord has called you. Remember, I said, but see, who saw the vision? Paul. But when Paul saw the vision, the people accepted Paul's vision as their call from God. Because the vision it's not a vision alone. 
But uh, the team got together. When Paul saw the vision, immediately we endeavored. The team said, we're going to make this happen. So it wasn't about Pastor Craig and, and Noel saying we're going to do it. It said we endeavored. That when, when they saw the vision, God called us to do it. So what happens in this church is not just what Pastor Alan and Noel see. It's that you, gotta, you may not see the same thing, but because they see it and they're the pastors of this local church, you say whatever that God told them, we're going to endeavor. We're going over there. How to, see, that's the thing. You may, some of you may not never see this the way they're seeing it, but because he saw it and because I saw it, we endeavored. Together, we accomplished more. We be the team. Hmm. After he saw the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia. What's, what's that street on? What's that street? The new church? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 31st Avenue and Grant. 31st and Thomas. 31st and Thomas. Immediately, Immediately. we done heard from God. Right. And we're going to endeavor to go there. Amen. For whatever money needed, it's done. Amen. It's done in Jesus' name. Because it's, because it's not me, it's we. We endeavored. To go into Macedonia, that the Lord has called. You gotta see when you make moves, this is not just a move, it's because God has heard people's cry and He's given the vision, and I've called them to do it. Mm. Are y'all following that? So look here. A pastor can see a vision, but without the people teaming up with them, it'll become a die vision. The vision will die. Because wherever, wherever there's not vision, it will die. It, it creates a die vision. Are y'all ready for this? Proverbs 29, 18 says what? Where there is no vision, the people perish. So what's holding this church together? It's the, cohesion, the cohesionness of the vision that's operating this church. And as long as the church holds fast to the vision of why, not just what we're doing, but why we're doing it. This is a call from God. God's hand is on this thing. God's hand is on this thing. Y'all started off around the corner at the weed, at the weed building. Well, when you go to church, you, 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 you get a little hint on the way to church. A little sniff on the way to church. You know, all people have been smoking dope, and you walk through the hallway and, you know, say. But then you came over here. Next level. But then this is not it. And now in a period of a few years, you're going to another building that's double the size. To me, that looks like God is doing some extreme things in this church because there's a team of people that say, God, if you said it, what we're we waiting on? Hmm? A church function because somebody says the vision belongs to us. This is not just something we're doing as a church. This is a call from God. God's hand is on this thing. God's anointing is on this thing. That's why the money just coming in. The money just coming in. Why is the money coming in? The money just coming in because it's got God's hands on it. That's why, you know, uh, yesterday, we were, away, we were on the way from Vegas on Friday, and the Lord spoke to my heart. He says, in the meeting, this was yesterday, in the meeting, I want you to receive an offering of 2,500 people. I look out in the audience and say, I don't see them. I know, $2,500. I said, I look, out, I look out there. I said, I don't, I don't really see 20. And we only had about, what, 20 people in? I said, Lord, you sure you want me to receive an offering of $2,500? He said, I didn't, you know, he said, I, I, I said, I want you to believe for it. Don't try to look for it. Believe for it. <laughs> believe for it. Yeah. All things are possible for them that believe. Yeah, right. so, so I told people, you know, because they already have to pay me. I already paid the fee to come in already. 
So this wasn't about budget. It wasn't about budget because people, people already paid the fee to come in. So and, and I was trying, when I tried to raise the budget, he said, he said, some people that are there that need a harvest. Yeah. And I can't release the harvest without their seed. He said, you're an apostle. And there's an anointing of prosperity on your life. So they need to sow that seed. And so I just, at the end of the service, because, you know, you, know, you kind of think, well, Lord, you, uh, you, people already paid the, what do you call it, the registration fee to come in? You know, what are people going to think about you trying to raise more money? No, God said it ain't about raising money now. It's about what they need to happen in their lives. Right. So I mentioned, I said, Lord, put my heart, we're supposed to receive an offering of $2,500. Everybody just got quiet. Nobody said nothing. <laughs> you could have heard the church mouse. It's like, it got real quiet all of a sudden. And then, but I learned that when you say what God says, just wait, because God's talking. God is talking. God is talking. And all of a sudden, somebody from the back, way in the back, said, Pastor, $400 on it. Hmm. Another person over $400. And then online, people start saying $200, $300. And within about five, five minutes, we was at $2,500 over and above. I think we probably, and then... At the end, Pastor Allen Noel kept another three thousand dollars. We we probably got over on about thirty five four thousand dollars in a few minutes. Why? Because God said it wasn't about the audience. It's about what God said. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you look at the audience, but no, God said I'm already talking to people already about this thing. I, he, didn't t- he said, I, I, I told you you were used to receive the offering on my behalf. I, got a, I, got a, I, got a, I have a harvest that I can't release until they sow the seed. But when it, done, when it happened, within a few minutes, money just came in from, from, from online. It came in through there. It was way over, over, well over $3,000. Because when God says something, it's going to be more than enough. More than enough. Are y'all following it today? Because the vision is there. The vision is there. So I don't know. I'm here right now. I just sense a, a quietness again. I'm not finishing my sermon yet. But I sense a quietness in the spirit right now. That, that, the, that, that the rest of the $10,000 is in the house. Hallelujah. It's all right. And uh, we didn't we'd have to beg for it or anything. It'll come in through the line, online, or it'll come on, it'll come in right here. But I, but I just sense in my spirit that, that uh, it's here. And some of you, it ain't about the budget. It ain't, it, it's not, this is not about your tithing. So the tithing is going to come later on. It ain't about t- paying tithes right now. It's about... The vision. Because I learned I don't have to preach budget. I just preach vision. Amen. Where there's vision, there's provision. Amen. I said, where there's vision, there is provision. Amen. I said, where there's vision, there's provision. Amen. And when God has a need, all he needs is your seed. Amen. And when you sow that seed, he multiplies your seed sown. He said, Dr. Craig, but I've already given to us. It's not about what you've done before. It's about right now. It's something that God's going to release. I'm an apostle of God, and when, and when God had me to speak like this, it's always because it's something he got, something he's doing. It's not about what I'm doing. So I know that, that, that y'all are already at, what, $3,500 already? $4,000 right now? And, and, and you have until, the, uh, until October? When, when, how soon you need it? By September the 15th. So what I want to do now is, you know, let's just, let's by faith receive the full amount. I ain't finished my sermon yet. I, but I, but I, I learned a long time ago when God, when the God put that little silence on me because he said, do that now. It ain't, about, it ain't about the order of the service right now. It's not your tithing. It's not your tithing right now. This is about you need a harvest. 
whether it's in your business, whether in your ministry, whatever it is, you need a harvest. And this is an opportunity right now. Hey, the, the, you want some bash? This is the shad fish I'm giving you right now. This is your, your the, ready to launch this. So real quickly, I'm not finished my sermon yet, but real quickly, I want you all to, what, what, what God put in your heart that you can believe God for by September the 15th and the budget is met. 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 All we got to do now is, that's the vision, just trim off the, the unbelief. I don't know if you do Are you following me? So I, myself, I'm going to start with the first 500 of it myself. You said another 500? Another 500. That's 1,000 right now. So how, many do, how much do we need, Alfred? That's six, we need 6,500 total. So that's five hundred. So down, that's another five hundred. That's a thousand. So we're down. We're now now to what? Fifty-five hundred now. We fifty-five hundred now. We need. Okay. Who else? Just you know, real quickly. Yes, sir, Pastor. I'll get uh, hundred and twenty dollars. Another hundred twenty dollars. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah, man. Just whatever God said. Yes, ma'am. Another five hundred. Another hundred and fifty dollars. Now you that are online. Because this is this is your church too. Amen. Uh, if you can if you can text uh, either my Facebook, some of you are on my Facebook uh, deal, and some of you are on uh, I am's church book page. If you will just text, there, if there's some of you that's want to make uh, uh, God speaking to you also, and uh, I know I think Alfred had a way of looking at that, mm-hmm. and uh, and you just text if you got an amount, you can do the same thing. And this hey, it, ain't, it ain't about it ain't about trying to raise money. This is about vision. Yeah. See, it's about something God has already done. So, so God just needs our what? Participation. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else? Just whatever God put in your heart. Yes, ma'am. Another hundred. Amen. This is by September the 15th. And I said, see, just believe for it. It was God put in your heart. So God, you know, I don't know how it's going to happen, but Lord, you, put the, you dropped this out of my heart. And I'm going to do this in Jesus' name. Yes, ma'am. Another $50. Another $50. Praise God. Excellent. Excellent. All right. All right, I'm going to spend a long time on it because it's, it's done already. So God will continue to talk to people on this. Yes, ma'am. 200. Another 200. Excellent, excellent. Excellent, praise God. And see, I told people yesterday that I'm not raising this money. I'm just obeying God. And so what happened is that money going to come in if, if a donkey got to bring it in and, and walk through the door. It's going to be here on September the 15th. I'm telling you, watch it. Watch it happen. If a donkey got to come through. And he said, wrong, wrong, wrong. What's going on with the donkey? I came to raise some more cash. God would bring money in when it is, because it's, it's, where there's vision is always what? Provision. So this is not your tithing. Okay, so I, want y'all, I just want y'all to agree with me right now that we have, not going to get, we have the full $10,000 as of yeah, but, but, but that's when it's going to fully manifest. But when do we, get, when, when do we receive it? Now. now. See, we're receiving it right now that it's done. All now for the manifestation, it's going to happen. But as of now, we, our confession is we have $10,000. What, uh, what today, what's today's date? Write it down. On, on, uh, on July the 18th. What time is it right now? 10-24. At 10-24. A.M., we received $10,000. Amen. And, and, the, and the seed's been sown, and watch and see how God, because where there's vision, there's always provision. Amen. So, God, so I don't want to take a lot of time on that, because like I said, it's not about begging for money. It's, a, it's about listening to God. God said, right now, receive it, right? Receive the full amount. And it's done. Everybody say it's done. it's done. All right, praise God. All right. What's that? Dr. Bell said another hundred dollars. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Glory to God. Is that right? So, so let me share this with you. I'm finishing finish the lesson now. Proverbs 29 and 18 says, Where there is no, where there is no, 
what happens when the people perish. So, so, so what God is saying to I am is that I'm sending you to rescue people from their perishing predicaments. Mm. There's people out there that are perishing. I said there are people out there that are perishing and I'm sending you to rescue them from their perishing predicament. I remember back in 19, in 1974, in December of 1974, around the first part of December, I was on the streets going down Indian School Road, running right Indian School Road. I was on the street going to Indian School Road. I had a 1964 Ford van that we had a cleaner's business, and I was using it, and me and a friend of mine, uh, we, were, we were going down the road, and, and that van, it, you, know, you know, on the old days when a truck be using a lot of oil, when the, when the, when the oil would be leaking and, and, and the fumes would be coming in, so it was, like, it was one of them kind of trucks. And I was riding down the road smoking weed. That was the, during the time of Superfly. And, my, and I had my hair all back. My, I swear my hair processed. And so I, 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 would, I would curl up and moan. And, don't, and on the way to work, I, I'd have my hair like this and let it dry out on the way home. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, on the way to work. And I'm hot. This is in December on a, th- on a Thursday night in the school road. And I was in a perishing predicament. I was a drug dealer. I was buying a brand new car every nine to ten months. You know, having my own apartments, townhomes, everything I could want, I was having at the age of 19 years old. I was a hairdresser by front, but a drug dealer in reality. I was perishing. And on the outside, it looked like on the outside, I had it made. My superfly hair though, my superfly clothes. I'm going down in the school road. Because I, I also had a brand new 1974 Ford Borham of my own car. It had the skirts on and everything. Beautiful little car. Gold. Superfly. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> so y'all remember that? I go into a nightclub, people like me because, you know, I was sharp. People I had it made, but they did not know that what they saw on the outside was not what was going on on the inside. I needed rescuing from my perishing predicament. Are you following me? And I never forget how God has a way of Sending people your way when you are in a perishing predicament. Well, on the outside, you look rich, but on the inside, mm, mm, mm. I go into them nightclubs. People say, that's, that's Alfred. But on the inside, at 3 o'clock in the morning, I had to face the real thing. Because when the drugs was down and the women were gone, I had to look inside myself and say, I'm really an unhappy man. I don't have no vision for my life. Everybody else think I do, but in reality, I'm in a perishing predicament. And that's why God gives somebody a vision. And, they, and, and on this night, right on 25th Avenue, Washington, there was a little church over there. Me and a friend of mine, we said, let's just go to church. We've been hearing about these church folks. I didn't want to tell everybody that I was really hungry for God. All I knew I needed help. I'm in a perishing predicament. So I, we walk in that church on that night. So 25 didn't watch a little bit of church at that time. And, uh, and the man was preaching. He's out of California. And he was preaching. And it, it seemed like he was talking to me. I said, this man talking to me. You know, but he didn't even know us. But it's like what he was talking to me. He was talking to us. And, and so, the, uh, so we went to a nightclub after that. But we just talked about these, these people. There's something different from them. And, uh, and, 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 but there was God. Pull, pulling me, that that church that day, little bit of church that day, that it, was, it was that God using that preacher that day to reach out to a man that was in a perishing predicament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you following me? 
Hallelujah. And I never forget, the next day, my friend, he was a pimp. My friend was a pimp. He went back to church the next day. He comes to man. He said, I got baptized. I said, you did what? I said, we were supposed to get this serious. We just went. But he was also a pimp in a perishing predicament. He said, Alfred, he said, I got baptized. I said, you got baptized? He said, yeah, I got baptized. I said, man, you, well, you're getting too sick of this thing. But all the time I'm watching him. We go out to dinner, and I'm watching him uh, open the door for his, his girlfriend, because we were all living together. And I knew that this guy, some of y'all remember pimps, he used to knock girls down the, down the stairs and take their money, knock them out of the cars, and now he done changed. So what in the world going on here? God was sending people to rescue some people, a pimp and a drug dealer, from their perishing yes, God. Yes, predicament. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. So that Sunday... My wife and I, we were living together, too. I said, we're going to go to church on Sunday. She was shocked to me because she didn't have been to church before. And, and she went because I went because she, she knew I needed some help. And so anything, I, any kind of help I can give me, I, you know. So we went and on Sunday morning, and the preacher was preaching. And, and, and at the end of the sermon, he said, now, anybody that want to get saved, you need to come down the aisle. I didn't know what saved was. But my friend. Had, had said there's something to this. I went because he went. And then Bev went because I went. That's, all, that's how we got, we got there. But all the time God was using this situation. So sometimes God is using people. To, you don't know you're being reeled in. But the Holy Ghost is reeling you in. He, you know, he, he reeled me in from the any school I wrote that on Thursday night. He, I was on, on them drugs. I came to church high. But he was reeling me in drugs and all. He, he reeled me in. And then on Sunday, he reeled me back in again. Hmm? And then so we went up there that day, and, and then they, they, they said, now you're going to get baptized. I said, baptized? I said, I'm, I said, I'm a drug dealer. Are you sure you want to put me in that water? And they said, what's going to happen that white put me in that water? They took me back to the church. And in the room, they put some white clothes on me. I said, oh, my God. I got, you know, them baptismal clothes. White clothes. This drug dealer in white clothes. Yeah. And then they took me down and they baptized me. Yeah. And I'll never forget. And they baptized me that day. The preacher said, upon the confession of your faith and the confidence we have in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I baptize you in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And when he put me down in that water that day, I don't know what happened. But when I came up out of that water that day, the power of God and the presence of God came all over. I'm a drug dealer. I got drugs in my house. And the, and the anointing of God came in my life, and I started crying. I said, wait a minute, I'm a drug dealer. I don't cry. I'm a man. Uh, you don't supposed to be crying like this. But then it was feeling good. I cried a little bit more. I snuck a little cries in because it was, it was feeling good because God was rescuing me from my perishing predicament. And the Holy Ghost just came on me that day. Mm. And that night. We came to church at night because they said, you want to get filled with the Holy Spirit. I, from my background, I know what that was. You know? And so, but I saw Beverly that night. I didn't know before she met me she was going to church. <laughs> she hadn't been to church since she met me, but she was going before she met me. And she got filled with the Holy Ghost that night. I looked at her, and she was speaking in tongues. And I was, oh, my God. And the Lord spoke to my heart. You can trust in her. You can marry her. It's a marriage. Ain't no we got to get married, Lord. We living together. Ain't that all right? We just living together. <laughs> Be satisfied. I mean, I'm going to church now. <laughs> you can get married now. Because in the streets, you don't trust nobody. I don't trust no women. And God put that in my heart. So that night I called her, I said, so I talked to my, I talked to my friend. He was a joy dealer. I said, I said, no, he was a pimp. I said, you know what? I said, we're supposed to get married now. I said, if you get married, I get married. He said, if you get married, I get married. I said, that's how we did it. So I called Bill. I said, we're getting married. You know, I didn't know how to, she said, I still didn't propose to her yet. It's been over 45 years. I didn't know how to propose. I didn't plan on getting married. Are y'all following me? 
That's all right. We, I got, I've been having grandkids for the last few, few days, so I understand it. I'm a good. But can you see what I'm talking about? I wouldn't plan on this. So I called her to be getting married. And so she got the Holy Ghost that day, and now I wanted the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost too. Everybody got the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. So I'm up there praying. I was at Pentecostal church. They said, just sit there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I started saying, thank you, Jesus. And nothing was happening for me. I got upset because, Lord, why ain't I getting the Holy Ghost? Everybody's getting the Holy Ghost with me. So I started really trying. Holy, hallelujah, hallelujah. And, and back in 1974, the only, it was a movie called The Exorcist. And that was the only spiritual experience I had saw. I'm from the streets. I didn't know about all this. And all of a sudden, that little, that little girl, when she was doing all the things, I started doing the same thing. <laughs> and then I, I, I was on the floor, and one head went like, 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 ah, ah, ah. And they would say, devil, loose him. And the devil would loose him. I'm going, ah, I couldn't even move on the floor. Ah, ah. So I, I finally got up. I told I said, I want no more Holy Ghost. Y'all keep the Holy Ghost now. <laughs> Y'all keep the Holy Ghost. The devil, see that, when you're talking about spiritual the devil will fight you. When God got a plan for your life. See, the, God saw that, what's today's date? God saw that on the 18th, I'd be back on any school road. He saw that he, was, he had somebody rescuing me, but, but 40, almost 50 years later, he said, there'll be some people in church that day. I need you to rescue that's still in this school road. And I've raised up I Am Church to be a rescue mission for my people that need help. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. To be a rescue mission. To rescue people from their perishing predicaments. So I talked to God, brother. I talked to God. I said, man, I said, Lord, I said, I, said I, 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 I want this, but I'm scared. I don't know what to do now. And, and, and the pastor told me, he said, look, hey, what you do, just read the book of Acts. I know the, and I never read the Bible, so I know I, I, did, I did my best. Yeah, that's right. And then on that Tuesday night, and before, we had Bible study. We always had prayer before Bible study. Yeah. And right before Bible study that night, I got on my knees. I said, I don't want nobody praying for me. I don't want nobody rebuking nothing on me right now. I said, God. I don't know about the Holy Ghost, but if there's anything to the Holy Ghost, I want you to fill me with the Holy Ghost tonight. And by myself, on that third pew, the power of God came on me. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, I started speaking in tongues. And the power of God started rolling me. I mean, it was like a wind of the Spirit of God started rolling me and rolling me and rolling me. And the power of God just stood on me for a long time. And people thought, what in the world happened to you? Man, just last week he was a drug dealer. And now in one week, you in church, full of the Holy Ghost and married. They said, this can't last. This, this has got to be another one of your games you're playing. But what they didn't know, the rescuer. His name is Jesus, who came to seek and save that which was lost. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, whether you're a drug dealer or a, a man, a president of the United States, whosoever will believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. Ha, come on, give God some praise for that. So when I'm talking about rescuing, without a vision, people perish. And when God gives you a vision, it's to rescue people. you got to ask yourself as a church, what, what are we in business for? Who is our church assigned to rescue people from? And the pastor God sent me to had never been in, had been in church all his life. He knew nothing about no drug dealers, but God sent me to him. And he told me, he said, he said, Alfred, he says, I don't understand how God sent you to me. He said, because I've been, I, I'm married as a virgin at 30 years old. I don't have, I don't, never had no street experience. All I, all I had is just street experience, I mean, uh, church in my life. Full of Holy Ghost, married as a virgin at 30 years old. I, I said, so, he said, I don't know how to relate to you. I said, let me tell you something. I don't need your drug experience. 
I want to know how to stay saved. And like you did at 30 years old, how do you still live saved like that? God gave, put me in the hands of someone that had no drug experience at all, but had a love for people. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when y'all are here with Pastor Alan Noel, sometimes you may say, but Alfred don't talk like the regular preachers. That's all right. He don't need to. But he's been, him and Noel has been called to be rescuers. To rescue people, whether you're in the football, whether you're a sports player, or whether you are whatever God's called you to do, whatever you have business people, God's got them here to be this He's Simple Church as a rescuing church. Because you gotta know this is the assignment. You gotta know what your assignment is. Because when I when I got saved, there was no churches that were out there to deal with people like me coming from those streets. They looked down on us. They said, they watched out for you because maybe you're still, uh, you're still doing something crooked all the time. And they didn't believe in the power of God. So you got to be in a church where people will not condemn you, Amen. where people will love you, Amen. and people will accept you just like you are. Right. And they'll say, come unto me, all you that live here. And God said, I'll give you rest. And I'm saying, this is the kind of church that you are part of, that that's gonna, this church will be filled. So when people come in, prostitutes are going to be walking through them doors. Don't come down on them. Bring them on in. Drug dealers and go come. But now, whoever wants to come in, let them feel free to walk down that aisle because Jesus is Lord of Lords and He's King of Kings, and He loves you. Why are people going to come to I Am Church when there's so many other churches out there that they got to pass by to get here? Because there's an anointing on this church yes, that no other church has. That's right. You're not trying to be like nobody else. Right. You, you, but you are the one that God has called right. to be one of his rescuers. Amen. You're not in competition with nobody else. Right. This church is a, has an assignment of God on it. This church is a reflection of the kind of church that I wish I could have went to Amen. when I first got saved. I was still raw. I still had a lot of, you know, uh, renewing of my mind to do. Sometimes I come home at night and feel like I wasn't even saved. And thank God I had a pastor that would look beyond my faults and see my need. You need to have a pastor that will love you unconditionally. But even when you feel like backsliding. I mean, one time I, I told the pastor, I'm going to just backside. This, this, this church life is too much for me. He would come and get me and, and take me to a restaurant and talk to me. And, and, and we'd eat until I settled myself back down again because he saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And God saw that, that I, I needed to, to work through all my instability because one day I'd be on any school road. The street that I, the guy, he's first booked me over, 20, over 45 years ago. And I'd be talking to you today. I'm telling you, there's more in you than you recognize. You are valuable to the kingdom of God. You have come into the kingdom of such a time as this. Don't let nobody tell you because of your past life, you're not fit for God. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil tell you because of the mistakes you've made, you're not fit for God. When God calls you, it's because he's already qualified you. God told, jo- God told Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's belly, I knew you. And before you came forth, I sanctified, I ordained you to be a prophet of the nation. Let me tell you, there's many prophets. You may be drug dealing right now, whatever you do, but you are a prophet of God. There's a call of God on your life. Look at these two back here with us. Huh. Kim Cobbs. Bobby Cobbs. What in the world they doing being our assistants? You know where they come from? Both of them come from prison. You was in jail. She was in jail. Ain't, ain't much difference. But you've been in prison. You've been locked up. Hey, I've been locked up, too. I didn't like it. I had to eat all that, that crazy food they had in there. And there was one of them guys that was in jail. Me, I'm the boss. How's you the boss? We both in jail. How you call you the boss in here? 
I didn't want to, you know. She said she was on drugs. Real bad drugs. She was on crack cocaine. What in the world they doing being our assistants? And then Kim coming out of prison. Who are y'all to be this close to the man of God? Because when it comes out of Jesus, all of us are equal. When it comes to Jesus, whoever you are, wherever you come from, we all got to walk down the same aisle. We all got to come to Jesus and we got to all say, Lord, hallelujah, give, creating me a clean heart. Renewing me a right spirit, God. I don't know, we, you may not have done that much, but whatever we are, we're all sinners saved by grace. Praise God, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Come on, y'all. Some of y'all have forgot where you come from. Some of you forgot how terrible you was. I don't know how, uh, how bad a predicament you did. Don't forget where you come from. Glory to God. You need to shout right now. Say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh my God. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, yeah. where would I be today? Yeah. Hallelujah. I was in a someone, it was is, is anybody else out there been was in a person predicament? No, no, some of y'all maybe you you may have got too holy now. You may have forgot about what the Bible said if, if it had not been. For the Lord on my side. One song said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. Oh my God. Sometimes we, 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 we stop going back. It's time to go back and think of the goodness of God. To remember where he brought you from. Because there's so many people that are still in the same position that you and I are in. All they need is someone to say, I love you, brother. You are a mighty man of God. Your mistakes it did not make you who you are. That's what this church is all about. That's what it's all about. It's about rescuing people from their perishing predicaments. Come on, give God some praise. He said, son, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. See, between now and October, if everybody in this church will just remember where you come from. And let's say, God, stir my heart back up again. Because without me, you have no hands to touch them. Without my eyes, you have no eyes to see the hurt. Without me, you can't express your heart so for the lost people out there. But God, use me. Use me, God. Don't let me become just a regular Christian. Lord, stir up a soul winning. Stir back me up and be a soul winner, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 So I see it right now. All y'all soul winners. Hallelujah. That's this should be filled with people. And when they don't, y'all love them. Remember, you may have some more Pastor Craig's walking through that door. They may be high like I was high that day. That's right. Yep. They may be a drug dealer, maybe a pimp, maybe a prostitute, may just be some other housewife that's getting ready to commit suicide. Right. But when they walk down that aisle, mm. love those people. Amen. Love them through their mistakes. Yes. Love them when they fall. Yes. Help them get back up again. Yes. Yes. Mm. That's it. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Now, I just ask this question. Who in here right now? And you that are online right now. I've never had that experience. Bible said, I said, experience the difference here. Maybe you never experienced that difference. The difference that God makes in a, in a, in a life of an individual. That are really, really, we said turn life around, but we, we can't turn life around. We just have to get, put our life in Christ's hands and let him do it. Self-effort always ends in condemnation. Because when you try to do it on your own, it always ends in condemnation because Bible says, none righteous, no, not one. So when you try to do it your own self, it always ends in disaster. But when you turn it over to God, that's what I did. I said, God, I, ain't, I don't know how to do all this Christian thing. I don't know how to do all this, this preaching they be doing, but I'm here. I'm here. I'm available. And so if you're here today or you're there online, if you're there online on Facebook, Maybe you like I was. Maybe you, maybe you are in a person predicament. Different people in different positions, predicaments. But it's one you ain't better get out of. And you want to place yourself in Christ's hands. Lord, I want you to do it. Then I'd like for you to just raise the pastor. I want you to pray for me, Dr. Craig. Pray for me. Anyone out there, just say, pray for me today. I, 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 I want to be rescued. I, I want Jesus to live my life. You're online the same way. Amen. Hallelujah. I guess everybody here already was saved, already born again. But there's people going to be coming in here that are not saved. By the hundreds. By the hundreds. And eventually by the thousands. Hallelujah. Maybe you're here today and you said, Pastor, I'm not a member of, the, I'm not a member of this church. But this, I'm telling you something, you need, no matter what you're in right now, you need a church like this as a home church. A church where you got a pastor and their wife that is not here to condemn you. They're here to work with you and love you through your issues. And maybe you need to become a member of this church. To, to, all right, I'm going to be a part of this team. Be part of this church team. I'm already a, a Christian, but I want to be. A, I want to join the team. I want to become a member of this church today. If that's you, raise your hand and say, Pastor, this, I want to become a member today. Is there anyone out there with church membership today? You, you that are online, the same thing. It's important for you to find a good home church. You, you, you never want to just be someone that's kind of scattering around. You need to be under someone. Jesus called them disciples. And what is a disciple? One under discipline, four instructed to produce maturity. You want to be a person that God can disciple in your life because God's got a plan for your life. Do we have anyone else that's out there? Amen. All right, praise God. Well, If you will preach what I just preached to you a few minutes ago, there's many fish out there waiting. Take this sermon and go preach it. Say, I'm called by God to help rescue people from their perishing predicaments. And when you walk through that door and you bring them in here, and, and Pastor Al and Noel give an altar call, you walk down the altar with them. And you said, if, if I go where you go, I'll go with you. And you help them. You help reel them in. A lot of people just need, need they, they need God. They need somebody to help, them, help reel them in. And, and you now are assigned by God to do that. Y'all got that today? Praise God. Come on, give God some praise today. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I'm excited. Now, we're going to prepare before we dismiss today to receive our tithe and our offerings. Hallelujah. 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 And, and the tithe, the, the, the tithe is very, yeah, that's good. No, well, thank you for that. Amen. The tithe is very important to a ministry. God says this, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. Now, the, the tithe, he says that there be meat in my house. Meat in my house. Meat means that this church, when you tithe into this church, is providing meat for you, strength for you. So that means whenever you get paid, think about that I need to be a tither because when I tithe, God then speaks to the pastor to feed me the word of God. 
You know, some people, they go to church and they just go kind of like as an attendee. And so they don't never really get the full meat of what the pastor is saying. But people that are tithers, they hear the word of God at a whole nother level. Because to them now, when the pastor is speaking, they're getting meat. But then God says, once you are a tither, I will open the windows of heaven. The envelope, they bring it down, the envelope right there. I'll open the windows of heaven. I'll pour you out a blessing. So when you are a tither, expect those windows to open up for you. Here we go. We got, we got uh, envelope on this side of here, Gloria. Okay, thank you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all got that today? And then he said, I'll rebuke you to vow for your sake. And then also for you that are online, you, you that are part of the I Am Ministry uh, uh, church family, that, uh, that belong to this church, you that are virtual. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's an information on, on, online right now where you could sow and give your tithing online. Just look right there on the I Am Ministries, and you can give your tithe right online in Jesus' name today. They got all the different ways that have been shown up there right now, all different ways that you can give uh, through different uh, cash app, different, uh, 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 different aspects that you can give your tithe today and your offerings. And so you can do that right online. Amen. Praise God. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So how many of y'all received the word of God today? Amen. 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 Now remember, share with your friends what I share with you today and watch God touch their hearts. Okay? Amen. 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 So, um, Hallelujah. Mm. hallelujah. I, you know what? I, I, I just sense that there's someone out there right now that's supposed to come up here today. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm up here talking, receiving the offering, but God, hey, you're on the hook right now. You're on the hook. And you're struggling with this decision to give your life to Jesus. And, and you know where you're at. It's easy to put on a, a face. You know why? Because that's what I did. But only God knows where you're really hurting at. Only God knows when really what you're presenting yourself to be is not what you're looking at at 3 o'clock in the morning. You're hurting, and God knows you're hurting. And you ain't got to remain in that kind of position. So I just take you know, 30 seconds. I don't want to, I don't want we're in the offering time, but I just sense in my spirit there's someone that needs to respond to that. You didn't, and you're on the hook. And you're sensing God calling you. You know, and, and one of the worst things to do is, a, is, is called procrastination. You put off for tomorrow what you should do today. And the Bible says no man knows what a day may bring. Meaning this, you don't know. Do you know how many people have been dying since last Sunday? You, you, you don't know how graceful God has been that you missed death this week. All you do is think about some of your friends that are not here no more. See, so, so getting saved is not really, you know, I'm in the church, preacher, preach, I, you know, I didn't come to that altar call. No, this may be your last time. So don't, so don't play with spiritual things. When you sense God got you on the hood, you sense God calling you, man, the worst thing you can do is, is, is back down from that thing and not respond. Because this is not a regular church service for you. This is God saying, today is your day of salvation. Don't harden your heart. So I give one more, one more final time. You out there? May be one person out there, but I sense in my spirit that God is not. You know, this just may be your last time that you. This may be the last altar call you'll ever experience. Maybe the last time you'll sense God's presence really wooing you in to say, "This you can't play with this thing no more. It's time to get right with God." So I'll give one more time. Whoever you are right now, God is calling you to get things right with Him. If that's you, just step on your feet and say, Pastor, that's me. I just, you know, I just sense that because you know, I, I, I don't want you to miss God. So if there's anyone out there like this, that's me, Pastor, that's me. I need to get the link right with God. 
Some of you, you may, you may, people may think that you already said, but you know you ain't been living right. You know that. And, and, but, you know, but not living right and, making, and trying to live a life that is not right before God, you open the door for the devil in your life. And you can cancel that thing out today by saying, God, I'm going to go and get things right. I'm going to live before God with all of my heart from this point on. Is anyone out there? Let me go back to the offering time. God just told me to give, throw that throw that out there one more time. Hallelujah. Because no man knows what a day going to bring. Amen. Is anybody? Now I ain't going to say anybody because I know it's somebody, but you're not responding. But I ain't going to beg you because, amen, spiritual things. Eternal life. You got to beg people for eternal life. If you want to choose hell, go ahead and choose hell. Just go on, keep living, keep living, and you're going to split hell wide open. If you, think, if, you think, if you think it's just something to play with. You think somebody's just trying to come at you. But there's a hell to shun, and there's a heaven to gain. And the wages of sin is death. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. By the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, God Almighty is calling you. It may be your very last time to get yourself right with God. I, I'm glad that I made that decision in my life because I, I know I'll probably be alive. Because when God calls you, you don't never know what that future is going to end, how it's going to be at. But when God calls you, it's nothing to be played with from that point forward. All right, praise God. All right, hallelujah. I just, all right, I'll let, I'll let you in, be between you and God now. But we're going to prepare to receive, we're going to receive our tithing offerings now. Hallelujah. 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 I, I just hate to see people, I hate to see God deal with people when they don't respond. Because I've seen so many people all over the years, I've seen so many people that resist God and the next week die. It's happened over and over again, and, and, and that's why when God put them by heart again, I said, no, I hate to see when God deals with somebody's heart and they reject him. You, you can't from that day forward, if you're standing before God today, and you go to hell, you can't blame God. Because God said, I gave you the opportunity to get your life right, and you reject it. He'll, he'll show you this very same day. He'll tell you, you did not go up. So, I gotta, so I'm righteous for sending you to hell. Because you chose that day to go to hell instead of heaven. And you know you wasn't living right. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Praise God. Amen. So, hallelujah. All right. Amen. And that includes you that are on Facebook right now, too, because God's reaching out to you the same way. He's reaching out to you to say it's time to get right with God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 See, sometimes you, you, you got to be fishing. Man, you got to a real fish on the end. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, praise God. I got to let it go. 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 Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Rescuing people from their perishing predicaments. Now, this, now let me tell you something, sense, God. That's why you got to be careful, too. <laughs> that when I spend a little more time on this, you got to make sure that you're not in the mindset, why don't you just go on the next thing? Because you can actually be blocking what the Holy Ghost is trying to do with your attitude. Yeah. Uh. You know, why don't he just go on to the next thing? Because, you know, nobody ain't coming up. Mm-hmm. Believe me. When I, when I do what I'm doing right now, it's because somebody is saying, and you, you mark my word, that there'll be somebody here today that this is their very last time. 
that they don't hear God telling them it's time to get right. So it's important that when something like this is happening, that the, that the people of God begin to pray and intercede. Because God has no one to pray on this earth except you. That when people are, people are standing between heaven and hell, they're standing between eternity and hell or heaven, and you and I are the only vessels God's got to put a stop to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all got that today? Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Glory to God. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. Just just think about this. Pray in the spirit for more. Just pray in the spirit. Sometimes you got to, sometimes you got to. Wait, because sometimes we've been be so big of a rush sometimes, and God's trying to rescue people from their personal predicaments. And sometimes the Bible says that God says, I, I, I wanted to deliver the people, but I had no, no, no intercessor, no one that could stand in the gap for them, someone that could help pull them out of hell's grip. Hallelujah. Out of hell's grip. Because sometimes the devil got a grip on people, and he's fighting their minds from really getting saved. And that person may be an apostle of God, a prophet of God, that God is trying to get them to make us straighten out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Maybe somebody online that's doing that. You might need to use it online. You may need to, you may need to call in or, or, or you may need to message or comment and say, Dr. Craig, pray for me also. Are y'all following us today? Very important. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Praise God. That's lifted. That's lifted. So now God is just. And whatever happens to you from this point on, he is just. Come on. Give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Um, we're going to prepare to receive the tithes and offerings. Uh, amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. And uh, as we do this, uh, how do how you want to do this, uh, greeters? Okay, they're going to come up. Okay, the urchins, y'all, 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 all the urchins come up front, and then we're going to receive it in Jesus' name. And y'all, 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 y'all come. Okay, good. All right, praise God. Y'all go and come up this, this time and. Ursus, you come up, we, and we're going to receive the offering. Hallelujah. The anointing is on me right now, so I'm, I'm, kind, of, I'm kind of off track right now because the anointing is on me right now because there's people right now that's in, it's, it's, it's in the middle. This right now, people are in the middle of hell right now. And, 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 and it's important sometimes to get this thing done. So at this time, uh, go ahead, we direct them right now to go ahead and come forward. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And you that are online, as we're doing this, you go ahead also and, 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 and give your offering, your tithing in Jesus. Put your hands together. Father, we just declare supernatural favor, blessing, and increase on your people, Father. And, Lord, let your glory rest upon every person 
And Lord, we declare that every need in this church is met, every bill is paid, and we thank you that same anointing goes in every member and giver in this ministry, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen, amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Well, uh, we are excited. Thank you guys for so much. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, October the 3rd. Amen. amen. At this time, let's receive Pastor Al again as he comes forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I mean, that was awesome. Amen. Man, that was a good word. Amen. 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 So don't forget about, you know, everything that's going on today. Don't forget to go out and uh, check out what's going on on the outside. Don't forget next Sunday. What's next Sunday, everybody? Remember, we're doing a uh, photo shoot Sunday. Amen. So come on, we'll dress up. We'll have someone here taking photo shoots of you. Also, don't forget when you're doing photos. Also, don't forget about uh, it's dressed down so you can come with your nice T-shirts and everything. So next Sunday is dressed down. And don't forget if you'd like to get more information, go to our church page, I Am Church page, and it'll tell you uh, what's going on and what's going on throughout the week. Amen? Amen. So uh, uh, next week, me and Pastor Noel, we're going to be teaching on an awesome series called Faith to Build. Amen? Faith to build. Don't worry about what's going on, what the pressure's going on, but we, we're, we're believing on faith to build and how we're going to build it. We're going to do it as a team and a family, so uh, make sure you guys can be a part of that. Watch next week or be online or be in the house. Amen? Man, you can go ahead and, stop, uh, go ahead and stand. We can go ahead and be dismissed, and while we've been dismissed, uh, Mom and Dad, you guys can go ahead and go out. Amen? So may this week bring new opportunities. May you receive favor. May you experience great grace. May you experience, may your enemies fall before you. May you testify the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. And to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. I'm Pastor Al, on behalf of my, and, and, and my Pastor Noel, we love doing ministry and life together as we fall, walk by faith and not by sight. We see you guys next week. You are now dismissed. Amen. <laughs>